Mike Briggs is our cattle market analyst this week. U.S. beef and veal exports during January were nearly 21% higher than January 2016 and included huge increases to the top three buyers. Year over year, shipments were up 40% to Japan, 38% to South Korea, and 41% to Mexico. Across this country, beef prices continue to fall. The cost of all fresh retail beef in January slid for the fifth straight month. With February's data due next week, the average price for a pound of ground beef is likely to be its cheapest in nearly three years. We talked with Mike Wednesday morning about meat demand going into summer and per head profits in the feedlot, but we started by asking how market prices had recently been moving. Prices have been moving in the right direction. We've been going up. We've gone up pretty dramatically too. You know, we've probably gone up, well, if you're looking at cash only, we've gone up over $25 in the last couple months. So that's been a really nice up. We've got our margins from red to black, so that's a lot more fun to get up and come to work every day. I think this is going to continue for a little bit because I think from a, a fat cattle supply standpoint, we don't have very many, so I think this is going to, going to be in our favor here for a little bit. What things added value in those last couple weeks? There's a lot of things, and, it, and it's all been cumulative. You've got exports up 15% over last year. Now, what is that in a dollar value in an animal? Sorry, not smart enough to tell you, but I know it's good. And I think you've seen that demand keep going out front. The packer has a lot of out front sales, so therefore we're having a kind of a pull through, to pull through type of a deal instead of a push. And so those guys have to keep buying cattle to cover these forward sales, so that's great for us. You've seen excellent demand on the consumer standpoint, which is surprising, I think, to all of us because we're all constantly complaining about how the price in the store didn't come down very much but apparently it came down enough to stimulate demand. So maybe the retailer does know what he's doing, I don't know. But we've stimulated really good demand in a time period where typically it's not very good. We're just coming into a demand period time and we're already rolling. So it's kind of exciting if we can keep this ball rolling. Yeah, the latest data was suggest that all fresh retail beef is the cheapest since I think March 2014. Yes. It doesn't seem like it's been, but slowly it's been coming down. So I would say, you know, going into summer, that has to give you some confidence that maybe beef comes back into the grilling option. Oh, I think absolutely. You know, and you've got the whole economy better. You're reaching full employment. All those types of things help you, and people just feel a little better. And so I think they're willing to go out there and spend that money and celebrate a little bit, and it's working in our favor. You did say last time we were here you were worried about summer, that the supply in summer could make things really nasty. Do you still feel that way? Yes, but not to as much, not to as much of a degree, and here's why. We're pulling cattle forward. Last year the problem was we were holding cattle till they weighed 1,600, 1,700 pounds and putting added tonnage on the market when we were actually slaughtering fewer cattle. This year we have more cattle, but we're holding our tonnage in check because we're sending these cattle to market because people are making money and the cattle have done really well, so cattle are ready a little earlier, but the big thing is you're putting less pounds on the market. And Always, almost always, when you have an upfront market that's better than a deferred, you have an inverse market, people are going to market cattle because they see what that deferred is, so they know there's no incentive to hold these cattle. And I can pretty much guarantee you, every time you're in a premium structure, that's going to be bad because people start holding cattle. So we're moving cattle. Even though we have more cattle, we're not putting a burdensome amount of pounds on the market. Demand is good, not just here, but abroad. So it's really kind of playing in our favor. Is there any change to how big the animals are coming into the feedlot? They're a little bit bigger because you saw a lot of cow-calf guys not like the price last fall and said, I'm going to keep them and I'm going to grow them, which ended up being a great decision. I didn't think it would be, but it ended up being a great decision for them because they did better on the, when they sold them. Now, yeah, we have a bigger animal here. Now, that, that gives you the potential to make some cattle pretty big down the road, but as long as this market stays in an inverse, I, I don't think you have a problem. You hinted at margins earlier. Tell me where they are. You know, there's there's some cattle getting up here. Well, they'll make up against 100 bucks, and I think you're going to continue to see that because a lot of the cattle that are going now were purchased in that really really bad time last fall. So those are your cheapest cattle going through. Now as we go, you're going to get to more expensive cattle as the supply starts to come. So that's going to be interesting. But I don't think it's going to be as bad as I once thought because if we keep now. It, it still could, but if we keep pulling cattle, you keep pulling cattle all the way, you know, June into May, well now you've 
kind of lessen, smooth that out a little bit, which well, that's what the market typically does. You're seeing this inverse to try to smooth out your supply. Has that profit brought in more players who want to buy cattle in place? Uh, you've seen just more people be more aggressive about replacement because they've made a little money, they feel pretty good, I'm going to go out and replace. What I don't understand is you're placing against those months that I already thought were bad. So if you're buying a loser or something that has minimal margin, expecting you know the market to come this way just because we're at 125 now doesn't mean we're going to be 125 then so i still think a guy's got to be really careful about how he goes forward impact of feed costs you know they've been pretty stable in fact we've had i really thought feed costs would be lower than this because we're a washing corn there's corn everywhere but yet the funds because of the trump trade or whatever you want to call it the funds have wanted to be long grains and you've pushed grains to levels that i quite frankly don't understand and you have huge crops in south america that are going to come so at some point here, you're gonna reach a tipping point, I think, and this thing washes out. But feed costs have been pretty stable. Um, ethanol byproduct has been interesting that it's been able to hold in there pretty good. Not as good as last year because the Chinese have kind of left this deal, but their grind rates are high. They're really getting after it. Once you see cow calves go back to grass, I think, I think distillers products become dramatically cheaper. I want to close out talking about box beef. Tell me where box beef is and maybe what it's indicative of. Box beef has rallied tremendously. We traded choice at like 212 yesterday. It's indicative of two things. Packer margins are huge. Again, they're making money. And like I've always said, that's fine if they make some money. I just don't want them making too much money. But they're doing really well right now again because demand is tremendous. You've got, like I said, choice beef up at 212. To support that kind of price with the amount of supply we're putting on the market, the amount of total meat supply we have on the market is, is really great. It shows that demand is very strong.